Hello everyone. Welcome to Power Electronics lecture series. In today's video, we're going to take a look at UGT triggering circuit for SCR. The link for the material will be provided in the description and you can download it for your reference. So let's get started. At the first place, UGT triggering circuit for SCR means we will be using a unijunction transistor for triggering purpose in order to turn on the SCR. So let us first look at the circuit diagram and try to analyze what is actually happening from the circuit and how is the pulse given to the SCR to turn it on. And from there, remaining analysis will be simple and straightforward. So let us consider during positive half cycle of the supply, what will happen? The polarity will be plus and minus in this particular fashion. Now what happens? Current starts flowing through this path and this positive voltage will be appearing at this terminal with some amount of voltage drop at the lower terminals. So when you have plus here and minus here, if you carefully observe plus connected to anode of D1, minus connected to cathode of D2, and because of that, D1 and D2 are forward biased. When they're forward biased, they act as short circuit and consequently, the current flows through this path. And if you carefully observe, since this is acting as closer switch, this voltage that is plus terminal will directly be appearing at this point and minus will be appearing at this point. We have a Zener voltage regulator over here to make it act as a voltage regulator circuit. So basically, for example, if you have a rectified voltage from this rectifier circuit as five volt and you want to clamp the voltage to three volt, this is just an example you can use a Zener diode and that will ensure that the voltage regulated at the output will be three volt. So VZ that is basically the clamped Zener voltage. The Zener diode will ensure that the voltage is clamped to a specific value. Consequently, what will happen? The current still flows through this path. The current flows through the resistor and the capacitor the capacitor starts charging with the polarity plus and minus. Till this point, the UJT is not turned on. Now, the current will flow through this path, the current will flow through this path, the current flows through this path. So we have a closed circuit where the current is flowing at this point in time. Now, once the capacitor charges to a peak voltage that is required for the UJT to turn on, what will happen? it will start discharging through this path and the UJT will be turned on. And once that is done, the current flows through this path and it acts as a pulse to the pulse transformer input. So basically you will be energizing the UJT. The UJT will actually energize the pulse transformer. This primary winding will link with the secondary and the pulse transformer will produce a pulse. And once that is done, the SCR will be turned on. So this pulse will be given to the gate to cathode terminals of the SCR. I hope this point is clear. What will happen in the negative half cycle? Almost the entire process repeats where D4 and D3 will be turned on and D1 and D2 will be turned off. The Zener voltage will still clamp to the same voltage that was in the previous cycle. The capacitor starts charging again. And once it reaches to a peak voltage, say that is required for the UJT, it will supply that to the UJT, the UJT will be turned on and the pulse will be provided. Once the capacitor discharges through the UJT and the pulse transformer, what will happen? Again in the next cycle, the capacitor charges and the process repeats. When the capacitor charges and provides the supply to the UJT, UJT will be turned on and once the capacitor is discharged, UJT will be turned off. So it basically acts as an oscillator circuit. So that is why you call UGT as a relaxation oscillator. I hope this point is clear. Now let us try to look at the waveforms and understand it's working in a detailed fashion. We have a sinusoidal voltage source. Let, let us consider two cycles of it. So the rectified voltage is basically from the full bridge rectifier circuit that we had, isn't it? So uncontrolled rectifier produces output like this in this particular fashion. And once we get this, this voltage is clamped with the help of 
a voltage regulator basically the zener diode so the waveform for the zener diode output is like this it is like this again it follows like this it is clamped to a specific voltage you can draw it again separately in another drawing or you can extrapolate but for space constraints i have represented it over here what happens to the capacitor voltage so previously we had saw the capacitor during positive half cycle starts charging to a specific value say vp and once it reaches the value of vp it will start discharging that is it will discharge through the ujt and the ujt will be turned on at this point in time again the same thing is what we are doing for every cycle that is during negative half cycle again charges to positive and then discharges during positive half cycle again it charges to the positive voltage discharges again charges and discharges now how about the firing pulses if you carefully observe i told whenever the peak voltage is obtained that will energize the ujt and the pulse transformer will be excited and the pulse will be produced so that means at this point is when you will be getting a pulse so over here you have a small pulse that is produced and this angle is called as the firing angle alpha again you have a small pulse that is produced between these two points again once the capacitor reaches a peak voltage and starts discharging the firing pulse is produced at this point and the firing pulse is produced at this point so what happens to the output voltage then the output voltage from this point whenever we are actually firing the scr that is the output voltage is basically the voltage that is obtained across the load terminals so it will follow the rectified voltage that is obtained here so whatever is the waveform here the same waveform will appear at this point the same thing repeats at this point as well over here again you have the same thing at this point and again you have the same thing at this point so you have to be very careful with understanding the difference between these two waveforms they are not the same almost they resemble to be the same but you have to carefully observe if you are triggering and producing a firing pulse at this point the voltage will be much higher in the shape whereas the firing pulse will always be as small as possible based on the capacitor and resistor values now you might be having a question as why should i trigger it here can i be able to trigger alpha at this point yes that is definitely possible you can do that by selecting suitable values of resistor and capacitor i hope this point is clear the main advantage of the circuit is the scr can be triggered for a range of 180 degree so both positive and negative half cycle you will be able to trigger between 0 to 180 degree again 0 to 180 degree considering one half cycle alone so since you are able to trigger it during both positive and negative half cycle it is quite similar to that of rc full wave triggering circuit isn't it then what is the difference between that circuit and this circuit why do we need a ujt why do we need a pulse transformer and all those things that actually helps the circuit because it provides electrical isolation if you if you had carefully observed with respect to the circuit diagram you saw a pulse transformer that was used so that pulse transformer isolates the gate terminal of the scr with respect to the supply and the load terminals isn't it with the actual circuit if you carefully observe the pulse transformer actually provided electrical isolation for safety purpose this will ensure the scr gate terminals will not be damaged and that is why these type of circuits are always used in most of the industrial application because isolation is one of the most important parameters in power electronics i hope this video gave you a clear understanding of ujt triggering of scr in case you have any questions with respect to this video please feel free to reach out by typing in your questions in the comment section below thanks for watching please to keep supporting thank you